us go. The force that can save their lives could shatter their minds, scared stiff. What's up, rotters, and welcome back to Brain Rot, the podcast that takes a deep dive into the best and worst horror films of the 80s and 90s. I'm Stevie, your VHS veteran. We've made it to the end of season three of the podcast. The season I told myself would have about 12 episodes and definitely no more than 15. And here we are, finishing up at 23 episodes. It's it's really, it's hard to take a break if I'm honest, because once it's rolling and I'm choosing my films, there are just so many that I want to cover, both seen and unseen. But I also know that if I don't stop for a bit, I will have a breakdown and possibly actually suffer real brain rot. But it has been an absolute joy and season three has by far been my favorite to produce so far. I've already begun work on season four, of course, and hopefully I have some pretty special guests lined up. So uh, more on that soon. So before we get to our final episode of season three, I have a few news bulletins. Firstly, the Brain Store is currently running a flash sale and our retro VHS season three t-shirts and notepads are discounted to celebrate the end of the season and we'll be going back up to full price in a couple of days. Uh, I announced this on Twitter at the weekend and the t-shirts have gone mental. So if you wanna grab one at a great price while stocks last, just head to steviesbrainrot.com or click the link in the episode notes. Next up, this episode is brought to you by Savannah Kelly, Henrik Janssen, Nina Schildhauer, Phil Thistleton, and Jack M. These wonderful people recently signed up to our Patreon page, and for that, I send my endless gratitude, and I bid you welcome to the Rotters Club. If you don't want the rot to end, dear listener, you can sign up for just £5 a month and gain access to a ton of back catalogue episodes and all of our upcoming offerings. Uh, Over the next few weeks, we'll be dropping episodes such as the Ted Raimi thriller Skinner, that's gross, where I'm joined by rotter Matt Cuss, and the mates of hell Alex Ayling and Brad Hansen will be stopping by to complete our journey through full Fulci's Gates of Hell trilogy by discussing 1981's The Beyond. Had a lot of requests for that one. I don't know why, because they knew we were doing all three. Um, We had an absolute hoot recording that, and apologies in advance to everyone. Absolute chaos. Then, the beginning of March, Mike Munzer will be joining me as we begin our journey through the entire Leprechaun franchise. Over four months, we'll be delving into all eight movies and we'll be welcoming special guests along the way to help us. That journey begins, of course, on St. Patrick's Day. Don't miss it. Also in March, we'll be doing a horror watch along with all patrons and the voting for which movie we watch will begin soon. All the Patreon info can be found by clicking the link below or if you fancy typing it out for some reason, the address is once again steviesbrainrock.com. Now then, for the final episode of season three. I took a punt and grabbed a random Blu-ray from my shelf to decide the movie. And the movie I grabbed was 1987's Scared Stiff. Hmm. My uh, my fun little game backfired slightly. It's uh, it's not great, but it wouldn't be brain rot if it was great now, would it? Joining me to discuss this confused motion picture is the incredible drag queen Ella Viday get it? Ella was a finalist on season three of RuPaul's Drag Race UK and has become a household name ever since she stepped onto our screens. Um, I was lucky enough to know her before she began drag and to watch this incredible journey has been a beautiful thing. But I did make her watch Scared Stiff. 
so this could be the last time we ever speak. Well, 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 hell of a day. Hello, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, darling? I'm really good, thank you. I've not seen you for a long, long time. Actually, I think the last time I saw you was maybe on a Zoom call during the lockdown when we did all that, that crazy stuff. Those, yeah, those when everyone meetings. was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, probably was. God, that was a long time. And actually, I mean, your life has been pretty crazy since lockdown. Because I, I don't think I've, I've maybe seen you once or twice very briefly in the flesh yeah. since you were on Drag Race. And obviously, it came. what I want to know is, though, with Drag Race, it seems like it happens really quickly. Do they literally, you send in an audition tape, do they then call you and go, right, cancel everything from <laughs> tomorrow onwards? Yeah, pretty much. I mean... I applied during lockdown, so I wasn't really doing much anyway, let's be fair. Yeah. And <laughs> I was I was waiting to hear what was going on with hairspray, so I was kind of in the mindset of I'm just gonna go for everything and see see what lands and see if hairspray comes in first. I even after I sent my audition tape, I sent the casting people of Drag Race an email to say, oh, hi, just so you know, if you want me for Drag Race, you're going to have to let me know soon because I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting on hairspray. So kind of balls in your court, guys. And then, <laughs> yeah, so it was, a, it was a couple of weeks after. I, don't, I can't remember exactly how many, but I first got a call on the 21st like, or something of December uh, of 2021. So it's like literally a crazy like 2020 was so f- mental it was crazy and then then you've got a few weeks to prepare i think what we stopped- see that sorry so that's <laughs> so to me that's crazy because obviously they want you to be the best you can be but and, and mm. also especially now it's not like it used to be where every challenge you make your own dress mm. you've got to get um potentially an entire series worth of outfits ready isn't it right? yeah li- literally yeah because they'll send you through a whole list a long old bloody list of like every runway and every kind of what the challenge might be. So, like, it could be a dog outfit. And you're like, okay, great. Let me just buy a dog outfit from Amazon Prime or whatever. And <laughs> Not Amazon Prime. <laughs> honestly, Amazon Prime received a lot of money from me because there was no shops open. We did, we did Drag Race during the lockdown. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> it was doubly hard. And... I hadn't earned, thank God for the um, for the government support that I received during 2020 because I wouldn't have been able to have afforded to go on Drag Race because yeah. I made literally minus £5,000 in that year. Um, wow. So yeah, yeah, you, you have no time at all and it's so stressful and I, I lost, I lost so much weight through stress. I had to tell mom, you're not meant to tell anyone either, you're not, you're meant to tell, right. I I'm meant to only have told Marco, but then my mum was like, I've not heard from you for two weeks. Are you okay? Have you got depression? And I'm like, okay, so I'm going on drag race. And she's like, oh, that's fine then. I'm like, it's not fine. I think I'm borderline got something going on. But uh, yeah, wow. it was it was hectic, Stevie. I can't even tell you. I don't, I, I can't even, I don't want to go through that anytime soon. Again, that's yeah, just, oh I'm God. sure. But I don't, you know, luckily you don't have to because I think one of the best things that ever happened probably for you was becoming a runner up uh, yeah 100 percent. i i got my wish like i i have such a good track record on drag race which is yeah. wild to me i think there was that there was a, a a chart thing i saw the other day the whole world i'm joint number three with danny beard and oh my god <laughs> out of the top 10 i'm the only one that didn't win so it's wow. It's kind of cool, though. I know it's like, I should have won and I should have really wanted to win. But after only doing drag for like two years, like, why Why would I, how, why do I deserve yeah. to win anyway? Like, so. Well, I mean, it's, it's not even that, but I, I it's, it, you did. You did win because I can see, you know, your life has just gone mental. And I remember your yeah. very first drag performance. I remember going to see you in uh, Trafalgar Square. Was it mm. West End Live? Yeah, West End Live, 2017. Yeah. I remember that. Poor. I remember that so clearly. God, that was such a short time to where yeah. you are now. Literally, yeah. Because between applying on for Drag Race, which was 2020, I mean, the amount of gigs I'd managed to do was not that many because... I was only doing and drag. You were, you were also you were Ella Vanass back Ella then. Ella the early days. Yeah, yeah. But I think she only changed in like twenty nineteen to Ella Day. Right. God. Um, 
But yeah, really, I went on drag race with very little experience um, and just had to like bodge my way through the whole show, which is yeah, what I did. But I, was, I was so proud of you and you, you absolutely smashed it. I'm so happy for everything that's coming your way. You really do deserve it. Um, uh, but sorry, <laughs> sorry to change the mood a little bit. First of all, I'm going to ask you because it's your first time on the show. Yeah. Um, what is your relationship with horror films? Because I don't even I don't particularly remember when we were working together. I don't remember you particularly going out of your way to see them. What's your, your nah. thoughts on the genre? To be honest, I'm not really into horror movies at all. Like, some of some of the ones I watch on the telly, I just sit there and I'm like, this is so... Like, so, I, like when, I like when they make you jump. It's when the, there's... <laughs> Why am I Italian? Yeah. When they're making did, me jump. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, some, there's some, like, there's one called The Servant or something like that, which is like a series. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen it. And it's so dire. Yeah, it's M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, it's awful. Um, <laughs> Reviews are in, ladies and gents. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know, I, the, one of the reasons I can't watch it is because um, Rupert, whatever his name is. Um, Grint. Yeah. Oh, he's awful. He's dreadful. <laughs> he is dreadful and I cannot watch it because of him. Because all he does is like this American voice, but it's like... <laughs> he just like grunts and growls and oh, I can't abide it. Rupert Grunt. Rupert Grunt. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's more like it. Jesus. Um, uh, see, I, I like horror, but I don't... It's not my favourite Jean, you know? No. No, not I know. favourite Jean. And I, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure we can really call the film that we're going to be talking a little bit about as horror, because... Uh, so I thought I'd seen this before. This is Scared Stiff from 1987. Um, and I kept expecting certain moments to come up, and they didn't. And I was like, oh, fuck, what, what am I thinking of? Which I really enjoyed. So it was a film called Cameron's Closet, which isn't available uh, on anything but VHS, <laughs> which is obviously obsolete. Was it a gay one? Was it Cameron's little no, closet? <laughs> sadly, sadly not. Damn you think it. That the very, it. It's not an allegory for, you know, coming out, unfortunately. It's just a very bizarre film about another world in his closet. Although maybe, I haven't seen it for 25 years, maybe it's in there and I just Could have, be. I need to rewatch it and go, this is the queerest <laughs> shit I've ever seen. But... Um, yeah, scared to say, first of all, general thoughts, because I, I realised I hadn't seen this before. Uh, my general thoughts, I mean, it's definitely 80s, isn't it, for, for a start? Yes. Bloody hell. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was just, a lot of it was just so funny, because... I don't even know how to describe it. Like, obviously, the the psych the psychiatrist guy, her boyfriend, you know, mm. you know, ch- jawline that could like sharpen yeah. knives, and then she's this sort of flaccid singer who is trying to sing, fl- <laughs> trying to sing a song, and then there's that bit where she keeps forgetting the lyrics. I'm like, oh come on, girl, um, <laughs> come on, girl. And then the son who's obsessed with that ugly lamp. Like, there's just so many moments. Yeah. It's it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Because you um, it's mostly uh, a kind of drama about domestic abuse, and then the last ten minutes, everyone's a monster. Yeah. And I would understand if they're trying to send a message about you know male dominance and the patriarchy and how bad it is. But at the very end, she ends up in a a psych ward, and she's uh, you know a dithering shell of a woman. And so I don't think that's really the message that you want to take <laughs> home. <laughs> from that it's like she ends up stabbing him and getting the blame for everything and, and he anyway every time she sees something weird he just calls her an hysterical woman and says yeah. like oh come on you've had episodes before <laughs> I used to treat you get over it and even like the very beginning of the of the film where you've got the slave master whatever his name was George something yes, Masterson and, and there's, they've got that awful dubbed over voice did you yeah. did you notice that it was like yeah. get it on the floor and yeah it's like oh my god <laughs> Yeah. Oh, when it started though, and it was a guy auctioning off slaves in 1857. I thought, ah, okay, this could get quite problematic. But, yeah. And then I thought, because we see the slaves curse this George Masterson guy, mm. and I think, oh, okay, if it's going to be a thing where uh, you know people of color get their own back for the terrible treatment, but then that doesn't really come to fruition. It doesn't really come back. There was so, a lot of story, yeah. there, a lot of sort of storylines that were started but didn't, weren't finished, from domestic abuse, slave <laughs> trade. Um, the fact that she just happens to date her psychiatrist, I think, is an issue. Why don't itself. we? We need to. <laughs> that doesn't. He goes. Oh, well, I haven't treated you for a year, and I still. I don't think the board 
would be happy. I still no. feel like that's tr- a bit unorthodox. <laughs> and there was one bit where they were having a chat, maybe about that, and then one of them goes, what do you think about Claire's new hair? And then, then the scene <laughs> keeps going. I'm like, okay, so that's how we get over that that issue. Cool. We talk about Claire's hair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and her name's Kate. <laughs> Is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, unless oh, unless Claire... A- maybe Claire was someone in the office that um, one of them... She's oh, got maybe. new hair or something. I'm sure it was Claire. Might be wrong. Maybe, maybe that. Um, I wanted to ask about her hair, and I thought you were maybe <laughs> maybe the right person. This is Kate's hair. The right yeah. person to talk to about that. What? 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 <laughs> what am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was quite a booth. it's a mullet. Yeah. It's like a mullet perm. The music video is everything, though, and they've mm. obviously... I like that they've reused the set from Total Eclipse of the Heart. It's just yeah. exactly the same. Literally. Um, I, I, from what I got from the film, she, she was a pop star and then she had this slight mental breakdown and this is her I going see. back into a it. Come back. It's a big comeback. Oh, it's comeback. the big comeback. And a, what a song to come back with. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In a beat of the heart, a beat of the heart. Is it the beat of my heart or something? something I mean, it's there. again very similar to Total Eclipse of My Heart. Um, I think uh, we get a good uh, a good slice of the eighties here with their representation of poor mental health. Um, you know, in the in the hospital, the psychiatric hospital, people people <laughs> are shouting at the walls, singing nursery rhymes, <laughs> dancing around with ribbons. Yeah. And also, what I quite like about it is they're all. <laughs> Whenever someone visits the hospital, for instance, there's the bit where the detectives sat in the waiting room, but all the patients are also in the waiting room. There's yeah. no separate area. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's, just, there's just you go straight in. I thought that there's a slight security issue if you know the policeman's <laughs> just in amongst the patients. One turns over the TV <laughs> program to something else, and he gets really annoyed. I think that's slightly unsafe. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got um, Wally who is the painter decorator. And I thought, because you've got a dog called Wally. I have, yes. I thought that instantly. I thought, oh, there's Wally. There he is. He has a rough time. What happened to him? Well, the pigeons. The pigeons. The pigeons. pigeons Of course. (laughs) They, they, They several times suggest to us that the pigeons are nefarious. Yeah. And that they are causing a lot of accidents and attacking things or making things move on their own because something will happen and then we'll get a close-up for the pigeon going (laughs) (laughs) yeah there was a lot of pigeon play in this movie and um so much so i've never seen so much pigeon pigeon acting in a film as this yeah it's a lot but he's no he's on the ladder outside and pigeons the pigeons coo at him and then he falls and gets hanged. Yes! But he's, he gets hanged by the rope that he already has wrapped three times around his neck for, what, fashion? Well, could, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe it's a safe place to keep a rope when you're on up a ladder. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that sounds safe. <laughs> Why was it tied to the tree as well? Oh, God. Uh, that bit no, made no sense. And I remember he was, he was a very deep shade of blue, when when they found him as well, which was quite quick. When but. they eventually found him, no, but yeah, he, no, the necrosis set him very, 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 quickly. very quick. But also, it's the first day in the house. He's painting, he's hanging, and then we and then we see two days later he's still there. Nobody has gone. Oh, I've noticed the painting hasn't, <laughs> you know, stepped up a notch. Yeah, it's he's, still, I've not seen still very, Wally. <laughs> yeah. He's been there for days and nobody has noticed poor Wally. No one's come looking for him like, oh, Wally didn't come home. Has anyone seen him? Oh, let me just have a quick walk around the grounds. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's hanging. He's blue. <laughs> That's very true. I, I didn't even notice that. I think I got confused just by by the storyline. It's just whoa, well, amazing. It, I love a, a linear narrative when everything <laughs> really fits into place. <laughs> yeah. Because I still don't understand what the fuck the whole... Why why he was turning into a demon. I understand the guy from the past, the slave auctioneer from the past, is kind of possessing him, but he wasn't yeah. a monster. 
He was a man. Oh no, I, I, you know, he kept waking up. Like I look like that sometimes when I just first wake up in, in the morning. <laughs> you know, when she looked over and he was like, Rah! and um, he had that awful. <laughs> That's a scary bit, actually. Yeah, like that was probably the only bit that was like, oh okay. Uh, but yeah, there was no sort of explanation. Maybe because he was reading the letters, or I thought maybe her playing the songs, you know, showing off her skills as like a, you know, very great pianist during the night. Mm. Um, I thought maybe that had a link, but there was no real kind of storytelling in how no. they became possessed, or he became a very, possessed. very strange. Yeah. Oh, I guess maybe it's something to do with the the curse from the beginning. But why would they? Give him superpowers if they were trying. It doesn't make sense. No. Anyway, so they fight. He finds that there is an attic that's been boarded up, obviously, and that's where we find uh, lots of strange artifacts. Have you? I, it got me thinking. Have you ever? Have you ever moved house or anything and found something weird? Um, no, I'm actually. I actually hate going in the loft, so I never go in the loft. I always get Marco to do it. My boyfriend. Have you ever been in your loft? No, not at this house. <laughs> <laughs> What? I don't That's know. mental. <laughs> it scares me. Talking? There's a I, whole room of your house you haven't been in. I know, but what I love in this film is where they're like, I didn't know we had a loft. And I'm like, of course you've got a loft. If you've got a roof, of course you've got a loft space, you stupid bitch. Um, There's windows. Yeah, like literally. <laughs> See from the outside. Know? Where was your surveyor? Why did they not check well, before you moved well, in? <laughs> to be fair, they obviously don't look up because not only is there a window, there's a man hanging from a tree <laughs> yeah. going blue. Yeah, exactly. Um, have I found anything weird? I don't. I don't know if I have. You know, just I like when we find in this house we found loads of old newspapers from like the day when they were left there. So like under the lino and stuff like that, which was quite cool from like yeah. the. The That's always good stuff. Forties or something like that. It was quite cool. Yeah, I've I found two 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 odd things I found. Uh, one was actually a hotel when I was in Canada. You found a hotel I... in your loft. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a big find. That's that's quite a lot. They had yeah, they had a staff of twenty. <laughs> there was a swimming pool. That's where the leak was coming from. <laughs> it was the swimming pool. Uh, no, sorry, just things I found in places. Yeah. Uh, so one was in in a hotel. This wasn't in my loft. Um, it was crazy. There were, I could see there was like a weird at the top of the wardrobe, the sliding wardrobe. There was like a shelf at the top, and I could see like a a wedged piece of paper or like rolled paper and it was right up at the top and so I managed to get up there and sort of take it out and it I unfolded it and it was this laminated picture of a naked lady uh, and it was signed and it said <laughs> my dear my dear Ron I miss <laughs> okay, this is quite... <laughs> okay it said my dear Ron I miss your balls on my chin <laughs> <laughs> what the hell and I was 14 and it was, it kind of traumatised me. Yeah. It was just, I felt dirty. I felt like I was being watched mm. and I I didn't know what had gone on in that room. But yeah, wow. it was a lot. I did, I did take it and show uh, my dad. I showed my dad and he, uh, he, he uh, well, he said he got rid of it for me. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it was wiped clean, so it's probably still being used now. Probably, exactly. That's the worst thing about it, the fact that it was laminated. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking crazy. And then gross. this is the horrible one. So, uh, was it Brixton? Yeah, I think it was when I moved to Brixton. Um, and I'd been there for a good year or so first, and we had floorboards in the living room. And I lifted one up that was loose because I wanted it. Every time you stepped on one end, the other end would go, mm. gag, 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 and it was really annoying. Um, and that was the time when I was sort of coming in at six in the morning every morning and waking everyone up going, gang, gang, gang. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I uh, lifted it up and there was a jar filled with raz- dirty razor blades, like a screw top jar. And my mind went all over the place because why would you keep the dirty ones? There's A. B, why would you fill a jar to the top with your dirty razor blades? Why a jar? C, why would you hide it? And there were also two toenails in it. Sorry, not toenails, toenail clippings. Uh, I want to know the story. Yeah. Or do you think it's someone who's leaving and like, I know what will fuck the next tenants up? Well, maybe it's like a little mini time capsule. They thought this would be cute. <laughs> okay. There's lots of DNA on these razors and here's some nails just in case they can't <laughs> scrape the skin from the razors. 
<laughs> That's possible. You'd be cloned, hoping to be cloned in 50 years. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah, so they're my uh, two quite contrasting finds, but both... Uh... Both quite sexy, I would say. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness um anyway so yeah uh that's probably more interesting uh oh. but actually you know when they're in the, the loft and they find you know when they find the skeletons in the they were real skeletons they yeah used. yeah that that was um at first i didn't know what maybe i was distracted at that bit but were they in like some sort of tomb because they would there was images well, of them being like locked into this thing I think it was just a chest just because a Masterson chest. killed his wife and kid, and then he just shoved them just in. Shoved there. them in the chest. I mean, again, there's there's some issues with whoever's selling this house or whatever not checking every room. I mean, if you saw a massive <laughs> chest with two decomposed skeletons inside it, <laughs> and pigeons everywhere, like pigeon shit would be everywhere in this house. It was on set apparently because obviously they had loads of oh, fucking pigeons on set all the time, Christ. and it was just covered. And apparently, it just stank of ammonia. I think that's the one. Oh, wowzers. Um, but yeah, he also finds her diary and he's reading that. And that's when we start to see he's starting to change the doctor. Uh, but obviously, because we keep being told, Kate, oh, remember, remember you used to have problems. Remember that episode you mm-hmm. had? So that every time she sees something, because she's having visions of the old plantation evil guy. Mm. And every time he just goes, oh, remember, you're a lunatic. Remember yeah. your mental health. Ha yeah. ha ha. Poor, poor Kate. It's just, I, I was literally just looking at my notes now, and it's all so similar for about 40 minutes in the middle. It's just this repetitive narrative of she sees something. It's a vision of the past. She goes and tells David. He doesn't believe her. Mm. She sees something. And it and it was scared stiff. Stiff, yes. Mm. Scared, no. It's mm. Bored stiff. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I found it so trudgy, the whole middle section. And, <clears throat> yeah, and he's was... just getting more and more violent with her. And then we see that back in the past, he he was violent to his wife and eventually killed her. And I'm like, I hope this is going to, you know, uh, the people of colour and the woman become victorious. And it's what it does it. It's a no. bit of a disappointment. I'm, we haven't even talked about the fact that the boy, his favourite toy, question mark, is an ugly lamp, a na- but a Native American painted red. I mean, the cultural appropriation <laughs> is really awkward. Yeah, there's so but many a things. A, a, why? Why would you love that lamp? I mean, it, I, I understand like a night light, but this is a huge yeah. vase lamp well, with really racist imagery. They, I think, they just wanted to get that lamp because that lamp had no purpose other than to be used to hit him round the head on the stairs. That's it, isn't it? And that the was, whole time. That was the only use of that ugly, ugly lamp, and I didn't understand yes. why a child. I mean, clearly the, the child has got some problems too because he was ha- like he was having a panic attack about the pigeons anyway, wasn't he? He just stares well, a lot. Well, fair enough he? though, as well. He does. Yeah, the first time we see him, he's sweating in bed and he is sodden. And she says, oh, it must have been a bad dream. Well, at least take his temperature because <laughs> he doesn't I think look it well. could be flu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's not well at all. And I feel like they kept zooming in on the lamp, like as if it had a meaning, as if it they had did. more to the story, like it was possessing the child. But it wasn't. It was just a lamp. Literally just a weapon for him at the end. Mm. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, another thing that you're like, oh, OK, I see this is going to be... And or they're going to do that awkward thing where the Native American comes to help or the spirits of yeah. the elders help in some way. But no, he no. just literally uses no, no, it no. to... Uh, just a to lamp, smash really. Him. Just a nice lamp. <laughs> <laughs> um, the bit where she... And she goes to the detective, who's we've seen around a few times. Yeah. Uh, and I just loved it. He's looking in his... He's in his office and he's looking through an empty filing cabinet. And it just really... <laughs> It really annoyed me and made me very happy at the same time because he, obviously they've said, all right, so this will be, this is your office set. So just be busying yourself mm-hmm. until, you know, she comes in and goes, hey, can I chat? So he's opened it and it's just an empty. And it's one of those ones where, you know, the, the files hook onto the sides and you yeah. can flick through them. And you can just see he's looking into an empty drawer going, hmm. <laughs> hmm. And so she comes in and goes, oh, can I have the diary? He goes, yep, there you go. And then he goes back to what he was doing and he reopens it and goes mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just looks into an empty yeah, drawer that is so funny I love 
I mean, maybe there's a whole backstory there that we don't know about. Maybe the files were stolen and he's searching for them. <laughs> and maybe the lamp had something to do with the files. I don't know. Could have yeah, been a sure. sequel. That sounds, <laughs> sounds, about, sounds about right. Oh, wow. Um, all of her outfits, by the way, though, are fierce. Like, go off, mama. And apparently they're actually all the actresses because they cast her about yeah. two days before they started shooting. So it's all her. That's why That's why they look good on her. She knows. She knows her body. And also the people <laughs> that they rented the mansion from. So they said, obviously, don't mess anything up because it's a really nice mansion, uh, especially the chandelier. So they were like, mm, let's take that down so they did they got it down they put it safely away in a locked room and then at the end of production when they went and they got it it was smashed to pieces no and way the director had the key <laughs> and so they're like hang on what has happened here and obviously they then had to pay i think twenty five thousand. but but it's like it's weird I, th- I mean that sounds like sabotage to me i don't think it was the native american elders and then they pay <laughs> so it's like a, it goes round in a circle to rent it as well, to rent the house, they paid the owners $25,000. But then they convinced the owners of the house while they were filming in it to invest in the film $25,000. <laughs> so so basically, it deleted the payment for the um, chandelier that they broke. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's clever. I bet they didn't it make very that back. Clever. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> wow. I mean, it's a that's... it is a nice house, but what? the mean, computer wild. graphics are state of the art, aren't they? Oh yes, a fairy. <laughs> <laughs> but the annoying thing about that bit is both Kate and Jason see the graphic of this stone that is going to save mm. the world. They see it come out of the screen and go, and they both see it, and so. He could corroborate her claims and go, right, okay, Jason's seen shit now as well. But they he goes his, they go their separate ways. Yeah, that's He's like, right, I'm off to school. <laughs> Good luck, Mum. left being slapped about. <laughs> go, you're crazy, bitch! You're seeing things, are you? <laughs> and he's, he's on the bus. <laughs> Is that the day he skipped school as well? He's like, do you know what? I'm just going to get yeah. I'm gonna get a ride to the, to the school and I'm just going to walk off. Don't care. Yeah. Oh. What a bastard. I, I, that, yeah. What a little bastard yeah. child. And then he causes a, a car crash, really. Well, I say that because we're full... Di- this la- this is the last bit. And actually, the last 10 minutes, even though I have no idea what was going on, it's kind of nightmarish. You know, the house has turned into a maze. You're seeing the giant version of the lamp. She, someone unzips their forehead. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, there's the demon in the back of the car, which makes the detective crash. And it explodes instantly. Oh, yes. He had a lot of gasoline in the back of that car, I reckon. Like, the... uh, yeah, Whether there's a demon in the back or not, that was going to... Something's wrong with that car, and that's going to happen <laughs> eventually. It, it, that needs an MOT. <laughs> yeah, that was quite the explosion. And little, little boy yeah. only just missed that car, didn't he, as well? The one... Yes. I've forgotten his name. And little, little boy. He actually did... Jason. Little Jason boy, yeah. He only just yeah. missed getting run over. Yeah, and that was real. They actually put the child in the road in front of a high-speed car <laughs> and their parents, his parents absolutely freaked out. Uh, and then they were like, oh, oh, what if we give him a stunt fee? And they're like, okay, yeah, that's good. <laughs> 25,000. We'll, we'll that. <laughs> yeah, 20, <laughs> <laughs> but if you die, we won't pay you 25,000. 25, it's the same 25,000 getting handed through <laughs> so many different people. Um, but this this final sort of climax i suppose i did enjoy it even though it's bizarre because we never really find out why he's there's a demon and why there's a monster like what's its purpose yeah is it where did it come from i i don't know i like it i enjoy the the giant moment where we see the lamp the face from the lamp coming Mm. down the corridor that was very panto uh enjoyed it yeah the the fact that every door in the house is now leading to crazy places like we're back at the psychiatric hospital the jungle mm. oh yes <laughs> the jungle of course we had to go yeah. to the jungle it all got a bit a bit wild in that house it's like some wild house party that kate was having was she in that lovely old old dress at that point still she's still in that yes, old that's crusty dress we, yeah we have that that moment where she sort of 
suddenly appears in it. It's it's like the end of Act One of every Cinder- Cinderella panto, you know, mm. the dress reveal. <laughs> so we get that. <laughs> Uh, and she's uh, facing off with Masterson because she's back in 1857. He turns into an even bigger demon. Oh, God. Yeah, it's, no, he does with a huge face. Yeah, like yes. a, a different demon to what we've seen before. So there's no consistency in these demons. Like, I couldn't keep up with what demon was this. And oh, I, don't, I don't know. Because that, that one that one seemed to have like a uh, like a... Oh, Markings like a mask. Yeah, like a proper mask instead of like a demon face. So oh, I guess is it the same face as the stone? So is that the uh, no? Because they gave that to protect her. So why would it call a demon? I oh god, I've got a headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't get it. But he anyway, he turns inside out and melts, and all his organs come out, which is lovely. Um, yeah. But what doesn't make sense again is that's happened. He's dead, but evil David is still there, and she stabs him, and she wakes up in the sanitarium. She comes to mm. <clears throat> now. Okay, this is the thing now, Ella, that I'm mm. going to ask you. Um, <laughs> what's what what do they want you to take away? So what in in four bites? This is what we've seen. So family move to big new house. She's previously had mental health issues. He becomes increasingly angry. Um, turns out he has been taken over also by a slave driver. Uh, then she finally can't take any more. Uh, kills her abuser and gets put in <laughs> an <laughs> asylum. <laughs> What's your take on that? What what what's well, the what's the lovely what's the lovely message? <laughs> it is a lovely story where <laughs> the same person wins who, who yeah. won at the beginning of of the film. So like actually there's not been any any further development in the mm. story. It's just the same old slave driver who yeah. seems to win at the end and just gets instantly employed as a psychiatrist. So <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> what do you take away from it? You can do whatever job you want, honey. <laughs> um, no, I mean, there's there's so many elements and, and in there. Keep, and keep your wife quiet so she doesn't tell anyone you've been hitting her, I guess. Yeah. Either, like, either kill her and put her in a box in the attic or sedate her. Yeah. I feel like the film said, you know what, slave trade is bad. Did it, though? <laughs> Treating women badly is good. Uh, <laughs> hey, become a psychiatrist. It's cool. <laughs> nice. You can get that's, away with anything. That's the free drugs. Way. Yeah, and you can get away with ev- anything, and everyone believes you. And shag your shag your patients. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, there's nothing to take away from it apart from always keep a small uh, mask near you to protect you, <laughs> but it won't protect I... you anyway because you'll still be put away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, fantastic. Um, it's lovely that, I think. Um, I'm going to take that with me on this journey of life. Well, it's powerful. It's a powerful way to live, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think they've got I think they've got all their morals in the right place and um I think I'm going to pass this message on throughout the generations. <laughs> it's like the beginning, the middle and the end were pretty much the same and there mm-hmm. was Nothing really happened in the end because <laughs> it was the, random the, demon. the same younger woman who wore the same dress ended up uh, a bit fucked. Having the same fate. Yeah, it's not like we need to rewrite history. So this is the awful thing that happened. The man got really evil and ended up killing the woman and she didn't get justice. So she's, you know, from beyond the grave, 150 years later, you must right his wrongs. No, it just happens again. Because no. you know what, history repeats itself, and we need to break the cycle of abuse. The only person that came out of this thing well is the son, the annoying son, who was able is is able to visit his mum in the psych ward, and clearly can see that Masterson is in charge of her care, but doesn't give a shit, and he's off to school. Because <laughs> yeah, summer holiday, <laughs> like, do you know what? <laughs> He's I... like, my education comes before you, mum. I know you've been wronged here, but I've got to get my education. <laughs> I want to be a psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
exactly lovely well thank you very much um that's that i don't think there's much more to say on that um but this is the final episode of season three of brain rot and i'm so honored to have you on what's what's going on what 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 have you got coming up i'm sure you're booked up booked up bruv Um, how was the tour weren't you just on the tour Oh, I did like I did about four or five tours last year, but yeah, we had the oh the season three tour, which finished in October, and then I did a Christmas tour with Kitty, which was sort of like a few dates yes. in, over Christmas. So I've had a well earned sort of rest for January, and I'm I'm just trying to get myself back to the gym, get healthy again, because it really, you know, what it's like doing an eight show week. Anyway, mm. my life now every week is different, so. You know, I've, I've had gigs where I start at 2 a.m. in the morning, like literally start and I have to go and sing at 2 a.m. or like even okay. later. So, um, so no yeah, structure. I've got, uh, no structure to my life whatsoever. So I've really been trying to just look after myself post Christmas. Um, I've got I've got some fun things in the background which we're working on, but a few things I've got uh, in June. I'm doing a hundred kilometer trek around uh, Saint. What's it called? What's it called? <laughs> Hadrian's Wall. Oh, right. <laughs> Hadrian's Wall. St. Paul's, sort of I thought you were going to say. <laughs> St. Paul's Cathedral. No, Just going to walk um, around it 80 times. <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing that for a charity called Copperfield because my mum had breast cancer and is still sort of going through treatment. So doing that to raise hopefully loads of money. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, just, just loads of other stuff starting to come in. So yeah, it's going to be super busy again. Amazing. But I love it. Yeah, exactly. I'm really, really happy and proud of you. Um, what? Um, where can people find you then online and find out what's going on in your life? Um, mostly Instagram. I actually got rid of Twitter. I hate it. Um, yes. Instagram, hell of a day. Uh, and then <laughs> face, Facebook, if you're over 35, 40 plus, that's where all my mums are at. Uh, <laughs> Facebook, the same name, hell of a day, yeah. Amazing. Listen, thank you so much. I love you. I'm proud of you. And uh, thank you for watching Scared Stiff. Oh, thank you for inviting me to watch it. It was fabulous. And I'm so proud of you as well doing this season three. What the F? Yeah, well, I mean, it's not... I I haven't, like, been (laughs) renewed. I'm doing it myself. (laughs) I I chose to. (laughs) That's why you should be more proud, because you're actually doing this yourself. Like, yeah. It's yeah, no, it's been great, and it's been yeah. This is something else, you know. It started in the pandemic, uh, and it was a uh, for <laughs> my mental health uh, to do something to be creative. And then I just found so many like-minded people who love the same shit as I do. Um, scared stiff, <laughs> not quite included, but um, and it's just been incredible. And now this is this is what I get up for. This is um, everything I love. So it's, it's brilliant. Amazing. Well, I'm very happy, and you should always. That's why I was doing drag during the pandemic because I had nothing creative to do, and we've both gone on and done some amazing creative things, doing yeah. things we enjoy doing as well. You know. So yeah, it's great. exactly. It's so important. Thank you very much. Yeah. Go Love and you have an amazing life. Love you. Thank you. Bye. Ah, there we go, my stinking rotters. Thank you to the angel that is Ella Day. It's been Ella Day. Thanks for humouring me and trying to make sense of Scared Stiff. Uh, oh, this is, this is normally the point where I tell you what's coming up next week, but alas, there's nothing, unless I can't bear it and go against my word. But no, no, I need, I need a break. I need to ferment a little. And uh, so we'll be back in the summer with a whole heap of new trash to pieces to exhume. As I mentioned, come over and join us on Patreon where you'll be doused with extras. And don't forget, the flash sale on merch ends very soon. And so, I bid you farewell until the days are longer and the nights are dirtier. I don't know what that means, but you've got a few months to work it out for yourself. Over and out, rotters. Toodles! (laughs) 